Hello everyone and welcome to this kind of test playthrough of the Bloodborne board game slash miniature game. Ahead of actually starting the campaigns, one of the four that come in the box. It says you can tackle them in any order, but it suggests that you start with the long hunt, which is what we're going to do. Prior to me getting the miniatures painted up though, we are going to do just a quick chalice dungeon. And if you saw the unboxing, we went through what was in the chalice dungeon box. And I have it set up ready to go here, we'll muck around with the camera, get a better view of the actual gameplay once we get started. But just as a quick overview, the Chalice Dungeon entrance is where you start, which is over here with the Burial Blade Hunter, which is one of the two miniatures I've painted up so far. Talk more about him in the next Getting Stuff Painted. And I just finished a werewolf as well, one of the four that will be required uh, for this. So Chalice Dungeon is a totally separate thing, it's self-contained. This card has all the information we require. You simply have to find your way to the Chalice Dungeon boss and kill them. And if you played the game, you know to get to the Chalice Dungeon boss, you find and pull two levers, that unlocks the gate, you go in, you fight the boss. Sounds simple in theory. There's also optional rights you can do for this, but we're not gonna do that just so we don't complicate things. Then if we flip the card over, it tells you how to set up. You select three random enemies. I've chosen the ones that you would use for the long hunt, which we can take a look at in a second. One boss, we'll worry about that if I make it to the boss, we probably won't. And uh, then the tiles you include, you remove the arena one because that appears at a set time. You include the two gates, they also forgot to mention that you have to include the arena gate, which is a mistake on the card, and then number of hunters, which is what that symbol means, plus four random tiles from the Chalice Dungeon expansion to make the, the randomised dungeon. And then you can also have up to three Chalice rights if you want, but we're not doing those as I accidentally dropped the card. What we are doing though, is just the basic try and get to the boss before the timer track runs out, which you can just see a bit of here. If it gets to here, we lose. We can die as many times as we want, but it speeds along the, the, the timer. This is the card for the hunter we're using. This is his attacks on the scythe side, which is what we're starting on, but he does also have the like longsword form for the burial blade. And they do different things based on that. This is his basic attack deck. You get uh, three versions of the four basic cards. You shuffle them. That is your basic deck unless you level up via the Hunter's Dream. Enemy actions which have also been shuffled. This is what your basic AI does when they attack. If you initiate attack against them they get to attack you as well and then they also get a free turn at the end of each of your turns. So that's why you die a lot. Hunter's Dream will worry about if we go there to um, buy upgrades for souls. Sorry, blood echoes. I should use the correct terminology. Uh, just also to quickly say, there may be mistakes in this, this is not a how to play, this is a learning to play. Trying to focus just on learning the combat, rather than going into like branching stories and whatnot, which is what the campaign missions do, because each is broken into three chapters, I think. So the first enemy we'll be encountering is this, you can pick a side, this side of the hunter mob. Again, we'll worry more about it once we've actually started encountering them. And they'll appear anywhere we see like a yellow slug icon. Red centipede icon is going to be the huntsman's minions. I picked the slow side, so he's slow but powerful. And then the purple beast claw, it's going to be Scourge Beasts, otherwise known as the werewolves. And they're kind of nasty on both sides, so I picked this one. Also, the one last rule that is unique to doing a chalice dungeon is that every time we enter a new tile, we draw a chalice trap, which could be nothing or it could be something bad. In fact, I'll, I'll put these closer down here. So with that I'm going to set up a more accurate camera for the actual where the gameplay happens and we'll get started. So we are ready to go, I'm going to start with this close up then as we add rooms pull back as is necessary. We're ready to start round one which means we draw three cards, you're just going to have to take my word that I'm drawing the cards. The first one is a basic dodge, second a basic draw one, and third basic dodge. Not great I would say for an opening hand, well maybe because we're exploring. So to move in this game you have to discard one of your hand in order to do that and you move two. So if we get rid of via discard the the basic draw one which is going to have trouble focusing because I'm zoomed in, it says draw one on it so I believe that means we can discard it, give ourselves two movement and then at the same time also draw one additional card which is Oh, a, a basic for plus one blood damage, well, plus one damage into our hand. And that means we can go left, right, or up. So we're going to pull back a little bit 
I'm going to go over to the pile which is just off to my left. We're going to pull off the top tile. I've randomized these off camera and flip it. So, it's another tri corridor with one enemy spawn and nothing else. Okay, let's bring this down. We'll pop this here for now. I have no idea what shape we're going to end up with here, so I'll just I'll work with it as we go. And because we're about to enter a room, we also need to draw a chalice trap. So let me just pull the top one off of there. Nothing. So I believe that just stays discarded until we need to shuffle, which we probably won't. So because there is the slug shape, we need one hunter's mob. Which, again, because this is just a quick test run of the combat, is not painted. Apologies, but that enemy is right there. So we do have two movement availed to us, so we're going to go one, two, and walk into his tile, which you can just about make out. And we're going to engage in some combat. So the way combat works is we put a card on one of these slots, and that is the attack we're doing. We then pull an AI card that will denote what kind of attack off their card they're doing, and they happen either one goes first, they happen simultaneously, or etc., based on their speed. Uh, they have 4 HP, so thanks to that basic card I drew, if I was to say initiate a uh, arcing cleave, but put that in to do it, that's now doing 4 damage, so it's going to kill them. But it's very slow at speed 1, which is the slowest speed, so they'll probably hit us first. I'm going to draw the top of the enemy action deck, which is here. They are doing ability. So, oh, in the enemy action deck, there's three basic, two special, one ability. So that's actually the worst draw. So they are doing, at speed slow, before the hunters attack, move the hunter mob one space away. All hunters in the space left must then dodge a speed two or suffer three damage. Well, do we have a dodge? Oh, we do have a dodge. So he would move one away. And then... We would have to dodge if we're able. I'm going to put this, the dodge card, in the arcing cleave space. And that dodges and then it also clears the space so it would be usable again if I had more cards but I've only got one left now. So we dodged so we don't suffer the damage. And it does happen at the same speed as our attack but it says before their attack. Does that mean they're out of range? You know what, normally I think it would mean they've moved themselves out of range but... The special ability of the scythe, before attacking, may move any enemies within two into your space. So they're getting dragged back into the space, they're taking four damage, they're dead. Which means we get one blood echo, which I do have to one side. One blood echo, which we'll lose if we die, unless I choose to go back to the hunter's dream. And that's done, however they will respawn later on. We have exactly one card left, which is just another dodge. So I'm going to end the round by discarding this card to change my weapon to sword form to clear this from it. We flip it over, it's the sword form now, and the round ends, so the turn limit goes up by one, and we begin again. So I've moved slightly to the side because my plan is to explore a tile here, but a new round has started. Oh, and if you didn't see the unboxing, so you didn't hear this explained, enemies don't respawn every round. There is red pips on the timer tracker. When you hit one of them, enemies reappear. So let's draw a new hand. We have a basic draw one, we have a dodge, and we have a basic draw one. So we're going to get rid of another basic draw one to initiate in a move for us. So it gives us two move, and I can draw another one. And it's a stagger. Okay. That stops enemies attacking you as long as you're faster than them. And we're going to go to the left, so I'm going to draw a tile. It's one of the arena levers. Oh, this looks scary. Interact on the arena gate lever to unlock. And it has to connect this way. Okay. So it's going to get slotted in there. And there's a hunter's minion and a scourge beast. Well, at least that means I can use the painted enemy. Scourge beast there. Hunter's minion there, and I also need to put down an item marker, 
because there is a consumable in there as well. I believe underneath them, unfortunately. Yep. Right there in the corner, there's an item hidden. So I don't think I need to go in there if I, I don't want to, because I can use the scythe's ability to drag in. Oh wait, no, I'm not in scythe form, so I can't. Hmm. Because they're both going to attack me. The Hunter's Minion has 5 health, the Scourge Beast has 4. The most damage I can do is 2. I can stagger one of them using my pistol, which is... Uh, which would have to be refreshed. Hmm. The, the sword special ability on this side is at attack speed, deal 1 damage to all other enemies within 1 space. So it would at least do a bit of damage, but... I'm beginning to regret not immediately spending time going to the Hunter's Dream to upgrade. Hmm. We only have 6 HP, incidentally. And the most damage they're going to do to me, assuming they get through all their attacks, would be 6 damage. I do have a dodge, though. And a stagger. And we do have 2 move. I guess we'll just go for it. Why not? This is, it's a game about getting murderized. They don't respawn if I do manage to take one of them out until three turns from now. So we'll do that and we shall initiate an attack on the Scourge Beast I guess because it's got less HP. So just a reminder this is what the sword side looks like. And I'm going to use my basic on a... He's very likely to attack quickly or medium speed. So I might as well, he's probably going to be faster than me, so I'm going to put that on the basic slash. Oh, but you can't quite see, so I'll put it here so you can see. Put that on there, the draw one kicks in, so I draw another card to my hand. And it's a basic with plus one damage, that would have been nice <laughs> earlier on. So I'm doing that, but he has to attack me. So enemy action, and we don't refresh the enemy action deck until it's empty. That's the important part. So he's doing a basic attack. The Scourge Beast, I also don't think the Hunter's Minion will get a chance to attack me until the turn ends because I didn't attack him, but I might be wrong about that. I'll have to double check actually. But anyway, the Scourge Beast is doing a basic attack for sure. It's a quick swipe, it's the fastest possible speed and it does 2 damage. I could dodge it. I could. I will. I will play the dodge into this slot into speed 3 so it's the same speed and then it says clear this slot so it gets discarded immediately. I avoid his damage and I do 2 damage to him of his 4 which I will look out now but I'm also going to do a quick break to double check whether or not the hunter's minion gets a free attack. Alright as far as I can tell because I haven't initiated combat with the huntsman's minion he won't attack me until the, the monster's turn after I'm done just the simultaneous attack from the Scourge Beast should be the one that procs and presumably that's despite the fact that um, at, at attack speed which is attack speed 2 deal 1 damage to all other enemies deals 1 damage to him I, I don't know I couldn't see anything that specifically said other enemies on the tile also attack you simultaneously but I may just have missed it so if that's wrong feel free to correct but please do tell me which bit of the rulebook it says that on so we can attack again if we want because we have two cards left and if I hit, yeah, we can kill him. I'm going to play the plus one damage on the quick cut, sorry, the quick carve. So it does one damage, it's super quick, but it does plus one, which is enough to kill him. But he does still get to do an action. We want to look for a slow action here, so we want a special, ideally. He's doing a basic attack, which means he hits us simultaneously at the fastest possible speed. So he's going to hit us for two damage. I can't stagger him, actually maybe stagger works at the same speed, but I want to try and stagger him because he's slow. So I'm holding on to this card and we only have one slot left to fill anyway. So I'll take the two damage, we do two damage to him, he gets devoured, his blood is ours. I'll just put the two damage on my card, actually no, I'll just take two off of my card because he hit us for two, giving us four HP left. And because we attacked again, presumably, one more damage to him as well, so he's got three left. But that is going to be where we end our turn and it goes to the monster turn and he is going to attack us, hopefully with something slow. So we'll draw the action card here. It's the final basic card, so that means there's one special and one ability, no, two specials left in the deck. So, Hunter's Minion's basic attack. Super slow, three damage. 
So we're going to go at speed two and stagger him. And it doesn't say he's immune to stagger. Oh, his second attack, sorry, if it was his special, that specifically says cannot be staggered. He's doing just his lumbering swing. We stagger him. It's just us stunning him, basically. So he doesn't get to do his attack and the round ends. So those cards, I think those cards are discarded. Actually, I'm going to have to double check now because I didn't clear the board by switching my weapon. Either way, the hunter track moves up another one. Enemies are spawning again in two turns. So let me just check what we do with the full board when a turn ends. All right, as far as I can tell, those cards stay there. We start a new round by drawing three cards. We have three cards left in our hand, two staggers and a basic. And I would need to discard one to transform my weapon and then we could do four damage and kill him. But it would be slow. Hmm. And he's not going to do a basic attack, so our pistol is of no use. I I'm wondering whether or not I should just try and run away from him, but I believe he follows, and if you try and interact with something with an enemy on your tile, they get a free attack on you anyway. So we're going to discard one of the staggers to transform our weapon, so the slots are emptied. We must use the transformed weapon, you can't stay on the same side. So it flips over to the scythe side. And we only need to hit him for... Oh, we only need to hit him for 3 damage. So actually, we'll put our plus 1 and do a medium speed. 2 damage, plus the 1 is 3. So we might be able to stagger him because he could be slower than us. Let's see what he's doing. He's doing a special. Oh wait, but that can't be staggered. Cannot be staggered. Deal 2 damage to all other hunters in this space unless they dodge at speed slow. Well, we can't dodge and it says it can't be staggered. Our attack goes first, however, because it goes at speed two and his attack is speed slow with the one arrow, which means he dies before he gets the chance to do it. So we don't actually need to do anything. So I believe that means we have killed him with the three damage we just did. We'll remove him. And then I only have one card left, which is no good. Uh, let's see. They don't respawn next turn, so we still have a turn. I could use this to loot that consumable. Or to move on to the lever to pull the lever next turn. I'm going to loot. We're going to discard that to interact and pick up the consumable. So I've already got the shuffled consumable deck to my side here. Top of the card. Blue elixir. Hunter turn, move two. Well, you know what? We're immediately going to use that. <laughs> So that I move on to the lever. I can't interact with it this turn. I am um, items respawn when enemies do, for the record. Which is different to the actual video game. But that is gonna be the end of that round. I'm gonna to have to shuffle my deck now because we've gone through the entire all the cards in it. Uh turn track moves up one more. So we're one away from enemies respawning. And yeah, new round. Alright, shuffled, new deck. I'm drawing three cards. We have got ourselves a basic, a basic, and a basic for drawing, drawing extra damage. Fairly irrelevant right now though. Uh, we will immediately pay one to interact with the lever. So that's gone. And that means that we've pulled one of the two levers required to get access to the boss. And it also has draw one on it. So I'm drawing another card. We've got a stagger. We have two blood echoes. No, sorry, we have three blood echoes because we've killed three enemies. Um, three is the most you can have. So it's also about to roll over to a turn in which enemies respawn. Meaning I think it's in my best interests. I'm going to discard this stagger to teleport back to the Hunter's Dream, which means we clear our board. We refresh our gun if we had to, but we didn't use our gun, so that's irrelevant. I'm going to choose to stay in the scythe form and we're going to go to the Hunter's Dream, which will require moving the camera. We still have a basic hand, which I'm going to keep, but we draw back up to three because going to the Hunter's Dream immediately causes a new round as well. So here's the Hunter's Dream, and you can see the turn track. It is moving up because we've come to the Hunter's Dream, and it's one of the red pips. We're basically just over a, third, a quarter of the way through the timer. All the enemies respawn that are set as far as I'm aware. Um, there are some exceptions if there's like enemies inside somewhere that's become a boss arena or whatnot, but I don't think they apply to the Chalice Dungeons. I also just totally realized I forgot to draw a trap card for that room. Totally forgot. We'll have to just do it for the next room because it's, it's too late now because I have no reason to go back into that room. Uh, the enemies will follow if we're in adjacent rooms though. They'll start chasing. So anyway, this is the randomized hunter's dream. And we can spend our blood echoes on any of these cards. 
Now, let's see, after, does plus one damage after attack heal two? I'll take that one for one of the three blood echoes, that's rallying. Incidentally, these are probably still what are, is going to be available once we actually start doing a campaign, just because I know what to expect, to, to give us a bit of a leg up on the start of the campaign. Also going to get bloodthirsty, so on kill, draw one, heal one, because I like healing. And we'll honestly take a swift, it makes our scythe attacks faster for plus one damage. So because we took three, we need to go to our deck, and we need to discard three. And I'm going to discard... I'm going to discard two staggers and one dodge. Because I don't think the staggers have much use here. Because of the enemies that I've selected. So those three cards from our basic deck are gone. I'm going to have to shuffle those new ones in. And we're going back to the lamp at the start of the... Well, it's, it's the round that I just moved it on to as far as... Well, actually no, because presumably going back there... No, I, I don't think it moves up again. I might be wrong, because going to the Hunter's Dream ends your turn, so then it moved up to the Refresh one, and then a new turn begins with us reappearing at the lamp. So we're back in the Chalice Dungeon entrance. We have two cards in our hand. We have to draw up to three, so I'm drawing one. Will it be one of the new ones we got? Yes, it is. It's Rallying. Plus one damage, and then after the attack, heal two, regardless of whether or not you kill. So that's interesting. So I'm going to discard the basic to give us two movement. We draw one as well. We got another draw one that gives us two movement. I'm going to walk into this square here just to keep it nice and in view. Let's take a card, flip the card. It is actually the another arena lever, and at this point, I feel I should clarify I definitely shuffled these squares. But the two lever levers are next to each other. Oh, I totally forgot to put the enemies back on. Plus, we need more. We need another scourge beast and a hunter mob. There, doesn't that look much more intimidating? So I left a little bit of space at the bottom so you can hopefully see basically just about what cards I'll be playing on my uh, stat cards. So we have two movements so I'm going to move in and we're going to initiate combat with the Hunter's Mob because I want to kill them. And we don't need to heal because we went to the Hunter's Dream so we got back full health. So we don't want to use the Rallying yet, we'll just use the basic and we'll use it on an Arcing Cleave which is slow but it does 4 damage so it insta-kills them. And we know for a fact what this last card is. It is the final special card, so this deck now needs to be shuffled. Their special is Rifle Shot. It's also slow, but it also stuns and does 4 damage. I can't dodge it, so they are going to do 4 damage. And I'll need to check what stun does as well. But they happen simultaneously, so I believe they still get killed. But they do do the 4 damage to us. Oh, unless I stagger them. No, it wasn't a basic attack, I can't stagger with the gun. We just have to take it, so we have two health left, just like that. He is obliterated for the four damage we deal, and I'm going to need to double check what stun does, and while doing so I will also shuffle the AI deck. Alright, for stun, the hunter must discard one card, and if they can't, they miss a turn, I think it said. Or, no, sorry, we take one damage if they can't discard a card. I'm going to discard that, which I presume means the draw one doesn't kick in, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, I also forgot to draw a chalice trap, so let's do that real quick. Ambush. Spawn and activate one enemy, the slug, which is the hunter's mob, enemy in the hunter's space. So he actually would have gone before the hunters I just killed. So let's say that the hunters I just killed are actually still there, and what I actually killed was the ambush mob that just appeared in that room, which is now, that, that room's trap is now triggered and done. Uh, which means I didn't engage with them. So I could try and kill them. Oh, and also the ambush mob was in the same space. So before attacking... Oh no, I'm on the scythe side, so I don't deal bonus damage. Arg. Well, I'm going to try and kill the, the other hunter's mob, I guess. No, I have to be faster than them. Hmm. Hmm, I, I don't think I will. If they get their special action, a rifle shot, I'm going to have to try to, to live. We're going to go for our medium speed attack on the scythe with plus one damage to do three, which isn't enough to kill them. But if I live, I heal two. So let's pull an enemy action, see what they do. They're doing their basic attack, which is also speed two and does two damage. They happen simultaneously, so presumably the heal two doesn't kick in. But because we're not at a respawn uh, turn, this is what happens. They take their two damage, boom, boom, and it stays. I take my two damage, blep, I died. I go back to the Hunter's Dream by force which ends everything, so gun would refresh, you go back up to full health, the round tracker moves up by one, 
and you can draw a new hand. Your weapon also can be reset, which I'm going to do by getting those off. I'm going to stay on the scythe side though. But because we aren't on a red pip, that damage stays, everything else stays as is. The ambush has been done, so I guess we can probably just put that to one side because it's, it's been triggered. We know a basic card has been drawn and we can just immediately start a new round by drawing three cards. But that's how it's very easy to run out of time because you die, you lose a round. I drew two basics and a basic with damage. I shouldn't call them basics because they're all basics. Two dodges and a damage up is what I should be saying. I need to get the terminology right. So anyway, we're teleporting back in. We need to get into that room because it has a lever lever that we need. So we're going to discard the basic card to move. We're, hey guys, I'm back. As long as we kill both of these in three turns, and well, three turns hit the switch and get out, it won't matter if they respawn. Also, they didn't move because they need to be one room away when you end your turn to chase you, as far as I'm aware. So we're going to kill the hunter mob. We're going to go for a quick slash, plus one damage just because we have to use a card. Oh, actually, I might as well save that. No, we'll... I don't know if I can do this. Can I spend the basic to do a slash for just two damage? Because I want to just do two damage. I think that's okay. And then we clear the slot because it says clear the slot. Not that I have anything to put there, but still. So we're just doing a, a basic uh, medium speed two damage. They are also doing a basic, which means they're hitting me at two. So we take two damage. They take two damage. They die from their wounds. I don't die from my wounds, but I get hurt. Oh, sorry, we also lost all blood echoes when I died as well, forgot to mention that, but we're back up to one now because he's dead. And then in an effort to clear this space, I'm playing the basic plus one damage on one of my arcing cleaves to make it four damage to one shot the werewolf, as long as we live through his attack, which is going to be the final basic card. So we know there's just specials and ability in there now. So the werewolf's basic attack is a quick swipe, so it's super fast, it's two damage. We're just going to have to take it. We live with one health because we had four left. So we have two health left. He takes four damage from our cleave and dies. Put him to one side, we get another blood echo. We have no cards left in our hand. So the round ends, simple as that. And we move the, uh, the timer along one more time. But this isn't like gonna give us instant access to the boss either because we still need to find the arena gate. So it's not like it's over yet one way or the other. So, do I have three cards left in my hand? Nope, there's only two left. Bloodthirsty and Swift. So I need to quickly just shuffle the card deck and then draw one more card because we have to draw up to three. I drew a, okay, well that's fine. We'll spend that to, or discard it rather, to move and we draw another one, which is all the good cards that we have that are no good right now because we're not fighting. So we're on the other lever lever. I'm going to discard yeah, I'm going to discard Swift to interact with the lever lever. Both levers are hit. So now if we find the arena gate, we can actually kill the boss. We have two blood echoes to spend. So I think I'm going to discard one of these and go back to the hunter's dream willingly. Yeah, I think I am so I can refresh my deck, clear the weapon go buy some upgrades for the two blood echoes we have, get back to full health. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So this is how the Hunter's Dream's looking. I drew three more upgrade cards to fill the empty spaces from the last time we purchased. We can only buy two this time. I'm going to buy Invigorating. It's a dodge, but you heal one and then can clear this slot or any other for one of our two. And then I'm going to buy Defensive, which is a block two for the other one. And then to get rid of cards to make room for those in my deck, I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna get rid of a basic draw one, so that's now gone. And I'm gonna get rid of a basic clear wrist slot, because they're basically just ver better versions of those two cards. So now those will get shuffled, and we're going straight back in to the chalice dungeon. Alright, we're over this side now because I want to go to the right. We need to find the arena gate and then we can go get murderized by a boss. I'm drawing my three cards from a newly shuffled deck and our scythe is clear. We've got basic stagger, one plus damage, heal one, clear the slot or any other one of the cards we just bought. So we're going to discard the, we're just going to have to discard the stagger unfortunately to give ourselves movement. We're going to move into, I swear to you I shuffled these. I know it looks like I didn't, but I swear to you I did. 
so that is the arena gate which is open and there is a lamp on it and no monster spawns so we move in there is however a trap so let's do that ambush again okay there is a monster as it turns out so we'll just put that there that is a scourge beast it appears right behind us it's right behind me isn't it so we were about to just immediately walk in to fight the boss um Actually, that wouldn't have been a bad idea, or, or would have been a bad idea, because we're nearing another reset point. So we we want to mill turns to make that happen first, and then jump in with the most possible turns to fight the boss before it regens. So anyway, we're going to fight the wolf. Uh, you can't really see my combat card. This is what happens when it. Well, actually, we can start zooming out a little bit. Let's let's do that. There we go. Combat cards down here. We are going to kill that wolf in one shot because we're going to do a basic with the plus one damage right there. To do an arcing cleave and he is doing we know it's a special or an ability he's doing an ability his ability is different what is this feral rage flip another enemy action scourge beast next attack skills plus one damage and staggers he is doing a special so it's a combo slash which is faster than me even if this attack is dodged or staggered hunter must dodge two or suffer two additional damage Sorry, couldn't see that. There it is, there. Uh, he isn't doing a basic guy, so I can't stun him. I will dodge. I'll put the dodge down on slash, so it's speed 2. So it's the same speed. Even if this attack is dodged or staggered, you must dodge speed 2. Is that on top of doing a normal dodge? Do you have to double dodge? I don't quite understand the text. Because if you dodge, why do you have to dodge again at the same speed the attack is? I'm honestly not sure. Either way, I'm, I'm dodging at speed 2. I guess we'll take the 2 damage because I'm going back to the Hunter's Dream anyway. Well, I'll subtract 2. We dodged at speed 2. We heal 1 back immediately because of the card I played. I can clear the slot, but it won't matter. And then we do our super slow attack. 4 damage, which is how much HP he has. So he gets splatted. And the ambush in that horrible room is over. So we are going back to the Hunter's Dream. And then we're just going to mill a turn because going back to the hunter's dream puts us one away from a reset point so we'll probably this is a lamp as well so we're just going to reappear there the rest of the dungeon no longer matters and i don't have well i have one blood echo so i can buy one upgrade if i decide to i'll, I'll show it off but i think our, our deck is okay but we need to randomize a boss to fight as well so i'll get rid of these cards because we're just going to go and try the boss since this is just kind of like learning combat it's not anything related to the story and we'll see what happens so again just to be clear upon returning from the hunter's dream we burned a turn just so that we're on a reset point because otherwise we'd go in hit the boss a little bit oh they're back to full health so then that's the one weird part we burned a turn there's now four turns until the reset so this is our best shot at doing this i have no idea how a boss works i haven't seen anyone fight one so and again we may have done some stuff wrong up to this point this is why we're doing a chalice dungeon to start with absolutely point things out so that once we're doing the campaign where this matters more there'll be less mistakes fingers crossed anyway i randomized bosses drew the uh yarnum fumerian queen don't ask any questions about the blood on her because we're playing solo, her healthy side has 6 HP, and then she goes hyper, and she gets 10 HP. So it's kind of like the Dark Souls bosses in this regard, or the Devil May Cry bosses as well, I should say. Here's her mini. So she's in the arena, presumably in the center of the arena. We're not in there yet, because we have to discard a card to walk in. Unlike normal enemies who just all use the generic AI deck, and then that corresponds to their card, what they do. Bosses have actual AI decks, which you can see over there. I've shuffled them. So, we're drawing up to three. Draw one. That's perfect, actually, because that's what we'll use to walk in. Ugh, no attack cards, huh? Well, two movement from that discarded, plus draw one. Oh, that could be useful. Okay. Uh, I'll put her health bar, like, up there. So we're walking in. The gate slams behind us. There is actually fog wall tokens. Let me grab one of them. Here it is. We have a fog wall there right there not exactly fantastic looking but still and uh we're gonna well we have we moved two spaces so i'm gonna move on to her square and we're gonna initiate combat and see what happens and i guess 
See, that's the problem. I'm going to have to burn a card that isn't meant for combat to initiate combat, but she's only got 6 HP on her, or her basic side. What do you think she's going to do more? What, would I need a dodge more or a stagger? We have her pistol if she does a basic, so you know what? I'm going to, dis I'm going to put the basic stagger on an arcing cleave. We're initiating that for 3 damage. What is she doing? Paralysis Cry. Stagger Stun. Targets all hunters in this space. Move hunters one space away. It's super quick as well. I can't stop that because it's not... It doesn't even say it counts as a basic so it's, it's possible that your pistol is absolutely useless against bosses. Fair enough. She cancels my attack. Then I have to discard a card as well because of Stagger. So I will discard the basic dodge because it doesn't seem to do anything. I can't dodge at speed 3 anyway. So it doesn't do any damage, it pushes me one square away. So we're over here now. And then I can't really do anything so I'm just going to end my turn unfortunately. Which means she's going to activate, move towards me, and then draw another card and attack me. But I have a defensive card. Blood Spears. Medium speed, 2 damage. Medium speed, block 2. So we shall block that. It does no damage. The round ends with me having dealt absolutely zero damage because I have no cards left. So we move the timer up 1. We're just going to keep going, draw 3 cards. But I only have space for 1 on my trick weapon. So we've got a basic plus 1, heal 1 or clear of a slot. And a basic plus one. Uh, hmm, do we do we switch our weapon now? No, we, we need to try and do damage first. We're going to go for the four damage again. I think her being much faster than me is going to be my downfall. But we'll see. Poison targets all hunters within one space. Well, I'm going to get poisoned then. And get hit for two damage. So she hits me for two damage. So we're down to four. Now remember, she doesn't heal when we die, unless it hits a reset point. But then I hit her for four, and I believe I'm going to need to check what poison does. But hey, we got poisoned, goody. So she got hit for four. That's fine. We have two cards left in our hand. I'm going to discard this to switch trick weapon. So we're going to clear this, flip it over to the other side. And then she's got four, so she's got two health left on her healthy side. We're going to do a quick cut and increase its damage by one to try and kill her. But not kill her, get her to phase two. She's doing slower than me, medium speed, two damage. My attack lands first. So presumably it gets cancelled when she switches form. I'm going to one check what poison does and two check what happens when a boss changes phases. Alright, the rulebook just says you remove all tokens if you do enough for them to change phase. You flip their card to phase two and then you would use the other deck. So this deck is no longer required unless she heals. And that's the end of my turn. So that means I take one damage from being poisoned. So I have three HP left. Ideally I kind of want her to kill me though. So, and then it's it's her action because it's the end of my turn. Phase 2 card. 2 damage and poison. Well, she's leaving me on 1 HP. That's very awkward, unfortunately. So we have 1 HP left and are poisoned. Which means I'm dead regardless. <laughs> but still, we'll draw 3 cards because my hand is empty. Oh, sorry, the round timer goes up again as well. 2 turns away from our reset. Or rather one turn and then she resets so we get draw one attack one bloodthirsty but we can't get the kill uh she's mostly attacking at speed three uh, sorry speed two and she's probably gonna kill me regardless but might as well give it an honest shot we'll play rallying in a speed two slash so it's doing plus one damage for speed three and if i survive i'll heal two which will cover the poison damage Depends what she's doing though. Super speed, stagger, stun, push me away. It's the same as our phase one. So we get pushed away. My attack doesn't go through because hers is faster. Presumably that means that I don't get the heal. I don't know for sure. 
Uh, we're going to discard this to move back to our square, but that does also mean we get to draw one. And it was a swift. Ooh! That's important. So we're going to walk back to her. We're going to play the swift in the final slash slot, making it do three and is also super fast. Hopefully faster than whatever this is. Good grief. <laughs> Telekinesis cannot be dodged. It's super slow, but it does six damage, so it's an insta-kill. I guess you could technically stagger her, maybe, but either way, it doesn't matter. Our attack goes first, so we did three damage to her, and then she makes her brain explode. So we immediately die, we go back to the Hunter's Dream, our poison goes away, we go back to full health. The round timer goes up by one, because we were forced to end our turn. Meaning I have one turn to kill her, or she goes back to full health. And I think, I don't think she goes back to phase one, she'll just go back to phase two full health, but still. We're also going to clear the board. I'll need to shuffle these as well because I think there's only one card left to draw. And we're going to be back in scythe form for when we teleport back to her. Alright, guess who's back? We're back, that's as close as we can get. We draw plus one damage, draw one, and draw one. We'll discard a draw one to move back into the boss arena. We draw a block two, that might matter. Hey lady, I'm back. If I don't do 7 damage to you this turn, you're going to heal to full, and I don't think I can do 7 damage, but hey, whatever, we'll give it a go. We'll do 4 damage, or rather we will attempt 4 damage with our Arcing Cleave. She is... Oh. Apparitions. Ongoing. Do not discard this card. Place 2 insight tokens on Yarnum. On Yarnum? Oh, her. Each time she is attacked, flip a normal enemy action... If, the ability, if it's ability or basic, remove one insight token and cancel all damage. She's giving herself shields. Welp. If special, remove all insight tokens and discard this card. Okie dokie. Oh, just put the two insight next to her. It's basically a blade of wounds. So that means my attack is going through though. So I flip a basic enemy action if it's ability or basic basic so one insight goes and she takes no damage goody well I'll try and hit her with a quick slash to get rid of the other apparitions I guess and I'm gonna have to shuffle her deck she's hitting at speed 2 and poisoning both attacks happen simultaneously does it actually go through nope oh wait ability oh no it did go through typical it did go through because it wasn't ability or basic so I hit her for 2 damage putting her at 5 but she then did two damage to me and poisoned me again. So I've got three health left. And I draw one because I played a basic. And I got a dodge, which is basically useless. Well. What do you do? I'm going to play that, or discard it rather, to flip the card. So we're going to go flip. And then we're going to try and do a quick cut with a block to damage. And I need to shuffle her AI because, well, she's basically only got the one attack. She's got the scream, the poison spray, and then the apparitions, which is still on the board because she's still got one left. So it's pretty much going to be a speed two poison, almost certainly. Oh, right, or the insta kill. Forgot that part. Well, my damage goes through. I blocked two of it, so I would only take four, but sadly I only have three health left. So I hit her for one damage, putting her at six of the ten she has. Oh wait, no, sorry, she can ignore it. She actually didn't ignore it. It went through. But it doesn't matter, because I die, go back to the Hunter's Dream. The round timer goes up to a red reset point, and she goes back to full health. Alright, back to it again. We are respawned. We are in the final three rounds, so even if she heals, well, there is a heal point at the end of the third round, but it doesn't matter because that's the end of the turn track. I don't think we're going to kill her. I don't think we can do enough damage. Well, clear that to move two into the arena. We also draw a... Oh, swift. That's handy. So we're back. I reset her because she is reset, so I'm just going to move on to her square and say, how are you? And then, again, she's mostly doing speed twos. We're going to do a quick cut, but make it do two damage. I reset her AI deck as well, because presumably she's full resets. She's doing the paralysis cry, but they happen simultaneously. So I'm not actually sure if the stun stagger happens to me before I do damage. Presumably not. 
and in order to give us a chance, I'm saying I do the damage and then I get pushed away. And then I have to discard a card because of the stagger, or of a stun rather, so I shall get rid of that. Uh, I don't have enough cards left to move towards, or I only have one I can play as a defensive action, which isn't a defensive card. So I'm going to hold on to it for next turn and end my turn there, which is terrible. Don't be the insta-kill. It's the insta-kill. Cannot be dodged. I don't think it counts as a basic action, so I don't think I can actually do anything about this. Can I? Maybe I'm misunderstanding how the pistol works, but it says when an enemy makes a basic attack, it does not say this is a basic attack. So presumably, and in the game you can't stagger bosses. Well, you can in special circumstances, but not with the gun. Normally. So presumably, she just splatted my brain and I died again. Which will send me back again. It will put the round timer one up. One up. So then I would be, I would have two rounds to do 10 damage and the most I could probably do is eight, I think. Well, if we'll give it an honest go, why not? I was forgetting it isn't a reset point, so there is a stall chance because that two damage is on. So eight damage is technically feasible. If she kills me on this turn, I have one turn left to kill her because then the game is over and she resets anyway. Interesting, interesting. Well. Bung this away to give me movement to go into the boss arena. Say, hello, yes, it's me. I'm back yet again. I'm going to accept that she's hitting me, but we're going to do... Let's see. We haven't reset her deck because she hasn't reset yet, so we know that she's done the insta-kill and she's done the paralysis cry, meaning there's one more paralysis cry, three poison spits, and the, the scream. And the scream is speed one, so I can't do anything about that anyway. Uh, I need to. I need to do. I need to just attempt. But do I make one of these faster now? Yes. So this is speed two for four damage. What is she doing? Speed two, two damage. Plus poison. So damaged. I am down to four health remaining. But I hit her for four. So she's down to, or she's taken six damage. She has four damage left, and this is my attempt to kill her by playing this on here. That is four damage. I actually did it. She hits me first, obviously. She hits me for two damage, leaving me on two remaining. My four damage goes through. She's got four, five, six on her. That's exactly enough to get to the ten to kill her. Two turns before defeat. Although there probably was some stuff done wrong. Yarnum, Fumerian Queen, you're toppled for now. But we don't get anything because this was just a, a challenge dungeon which doesn't permeate into any of the campaigns. But still, that was super lucky. Again, this was not a how to play. This is, this is literally the first time I've played this game. I've watched it be played and I've read the rulebook once. So by all means, point out anything that was done incorrectly. I know there is some ambiguity in the rulebook, so house ruling might be required for some stuff, but that's why I wanted to do this because it is just about the fighting, whereas the campaigns are about an evolving story based on your decisions, and dying over and over to monsters. So I wanted to get this stuff right, so by all means point out, and you'll probably see this video on Wednesday, I think, Tuesday, Wednesday. That will give me time also, one, to gauge feedback on watching this be played and any improvements, but also to start painting up some miniatures because for the campaigns, ideally, I want as much as possible painted. I don't want to use unpainted miniatures. For the Chalice Dungeon test stuff, I wasn't too bothered because it's just showing off how the game plays. Close one though. So anyway, by all means, let me know in the comments what you thought and I shall see you in the future for more stuff. Until then, start for now.